you guys it's Karen and this is the Yes Style haul that is Korean skincare that I talked about this was an offer um, so this stuff was gifted to me by Yes Style um, and I thought it was a great offer because it's not brand specific it's about yes style and it's about korean skincare um, as opposed to just one brand and i have already used yes style haul several times i think i've even done a video a little haul video and was really happy with their customer service with the shopping experience with everything really so i knew that i already thought yes style haul was good um, and legitimate etc and i was interested in korean beauty korean skincare i should say not necessarily korean beauty so i had a look through the website and and chose a few items and sent them and we went back and back and forth a few times in email because i was choosing things that were either not in stock or there was something else I, oh that, that didn't come under the heading of korean beauty but i wasn't aware of that because obviously i didn't know the different brands um and eventually came to this list i think however despite our going backwards and forwards there were some items that just weren't available and so i was sent a couple of replacements um and these are not things that i would necessarily have chosen um so i'll let you know which things that i asked for and which things i did the result is that one of them is not cruelty free and so that's totally my fault because what i should have said is if none of these are available please make sure that they are cruelty free and contain no fragrance and alcohol because that would be my um, criteria that was my criteria when I was looking through all of the products there's actually only three brands here there's the ISN3 which is the non cruelty free one and then there's Corsair RX and Claire's everything is from those two brands let me start with the product where I only have one um, this is a low pH BHA overnight mask so I did order some other things that were kind of exfoliating acids that were obviously not in stock but this one I got and I really love this one it is it feels like a primer um, it's very smoothing it's ve it feels very mattifying and it has a slight scent to it which I obviously missed I did choose this one like I said I didn't see the ingredients listed I, I guess I only ever check like the top 10 um, but I could instantly smell that this has something in it and it's tea tree leaf oil so I'm not too bothered about that because it's low enough on the list it's not completely overpowering it's a scent that I don't mind and this just feels amazing it feels really really lovely the first time I used this I thought well, that feels really nice on my skin um, my skin did feel really nice the next day but it felt really nice the next day after I had washed my face with a face cloth and kind of rubbed off the little um, dry patches because this did cause a little bit of peeling now i did use this when i wasn't using the a313 for a few days because otherwise i might have thought it was due to that cream but it wasn't it was definitely this and i've used it again since just to double check um, and yeah it definitely does on me produce a little bit of dry skin but when i sort of um, I guess you could say exfoliate again because I use a, a flannel just to you know just sort of rub the little patches off I could have used my lactic acid as well my skin felt really really nice so I really like this um, I need to look at my notes I have put notes down I was using the, all of these products over the Christmas um, holiday so I made notes on every time I used something so I thought I'll forget <laughs> Um, I've got this down as £14.73. If it's a different price when I'm editing, I'll put that on screen. This is a 0.9% BHA. Um, the ingredients are salicylic acid, lactic acid, gluconolactane, which is um, a PHA actually, and it's got this Centelia asiatica in it, which is this um, kind of real popular ingredient at the moment which is very moisturizing so really nice ingredients in there um, and the claims are that it exfoliates and improves skin texture and I would say that I can see how it would do that it definitely exfoliates it didn't make my skin sting at all <coughs> you know often with something that does exfoliate like the ordinary AHA mask I can use that and my skin does feel lovely afterwards and it's definitely exfoliated but I also get a little bit of irritation in that my skin is a bit red um, and anything I put on afterwards stings that didn't happen with this um, so it feels like a really gentle but effective exfoliator um, 
yeah really like that and that's something i could see me repurchasing oh something actually i'm saying about repurchasing and i've noticed on my notes here something i else i didn't notice this does have palm oil in it and it doesn't say that it's a sustainable palm oil so that's something i'd need to have a bit more of a look at before thinking about repurchasing um okay i've got two what I would call night creams, um, one by Corsair X and one by Claire's. So let's talk about the Corsair X one. Where are my notes? Depanthenol, this is called B5 Depanthenol Cream. So this I thought would be like um, the one that I loved by, is it La Roche-Posay? There was a Panthenol cream that I really loved by them, but I didn't buy any more because it wasn't cruelty free. This one was showing as the full price being £37, but when I looked at it, it was £15. So again, I'll put the right price on screen. The ingredients of this are 10% panthenol and then it has hyaluronic acid in it. The claims are that it restores elasticity and fortifies the barrier of your skin, which, you know, is something that, that panthenol will do. That's what the cream looks like. Um, it's a really lightweight cream um, it doesn't feel like what I would expect a panthenol cream to feel like I would expect it to be a little bit richer um, but yeah this was really nice it was this would be a very nice night cream um, no scent to it at all there's nothing nasty in it it's got sunflower seed oil in it this is just a really nice basic moisturizer that i think would be good for sensitive skin so i did enjoy that i used that a couple of times as a night cream then the claire's midnight blue calming cream um this deep anthenol i can't remember if i chose this or not but i definitely wanted to try this midnight blue um it's blue <laughs> it actually matches my top doesn't it, it looks a kind of purple color um no scent what have i put down there oh i've got my rib i don't know why I'm, I'm looking at it now instead of looking at my notes let's have a look and see what i've said so 20 pound 42 was the price um the claims are that it, this is great for calming soothing f as an after sun after shaving so basically it's all about the calming the ingredients are i don't know whether i'll say this right but guazoline blue it's some kind of plant that is naturally blue so it's not like they've put blue in here um, it's got Centelia asiatica in, which is a great moisturizing ingredient. It's got ceramides in. So this has actually got some lovely ingredients in and really interesting ingredients. It's more like a gel cream, I've said. It doesn't feel like a thick cream. It feels like a gel cream, a real refreshing cream. Um, it's got great reviews, calmed a red patch on me, feels lovely, and it's very hydrating. So I had, I used this when I had that red patch um, that I wasn't sure whether it was from taking niacin or whether it was from the A313 cream. Do you remember it was here? And also on my neck a bit. And so I thought, well, let me see what this does. And it almost instantly calmed it. It was very, very calming. So I, I do think that they live up to their claims with this one. Um, really lovely and fresh feeling. Hydrating, like I said, I when I try these things out, like with this, and with this, I use this as a night cream. When I first try it out, I don't use anything else underneath. So I wouldn't use a hyaluronic acid underneath or any of my oils or anything like that. I want to see how it performs on its own. And this on its own was very hydrating. My skin didn't feel tight. I didn't need anything else underneath this. It was just really nice on its own. So this is another of um, another winner and something else that I would definitely consider repurchasing. Three SPFs, which I'll talk about at the end because they're probably the least successful. Um, but let me talk to you about these two toners that I've got. The first one is the ISN tree and this is called green tea fresh toner um, and this is the one that is not cruelty free <laughs> I haven't put very much about this I haven't even put the price my notes say <laughs> I'll show you shall I just says meh and not cruelty free because I used this you can see I used it quite a few times um, on a cotton pad wiped it all over my face and I just didn't feel anything from it. It actually felt like I wasn't using much. It, it was really weird, you know, like I saturated a cotton pad, but would wipe it over my face and it almost felt dry. It was like, am I actually, do I need to use more, you know? Um, and so it's a weird one, it's very watery, but I just didn't get anything from this at all, which I was quite happy about because like I said, they're not cruelty free. Um, so yeah, this one, not, not something I'd recommend. It just didn't feel like it did anything for my skin. On to the Claire's one. Where are my notes on this one? I need to look at my notes to find the price. 
Claire's Town is £16.29. Um, again, I'll put the price on screen if it's different. And this is Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. Um, it claims to balance pH and prep the skin for other ingredients. The ingredients in this are hyaluronic acid, Centilia Asiatica, and it's also got copper peptide in it. So the first time I used it, it's very gel-like. You can see it's not, um, I suppose that didn't make it look watery. It is watery, but it's a, like a very thick water. It's more, like I said, like a gel. Um, and so the first time I used it, I used it on a cotton pad, but then I thought, well, I don't think this is supposed to be used on a cotton pad. Let me try, you know, just dripping it and putting it on my face, which that's the way you're supposed to do it. I think you're supposed to pat it into your skin. Um, but I have since been using it on a cotton pad and I really like this. I think, I didn't imagine I would like a product like this, but it just, I could almost just use this and nothing else. My skin felt lovely. It almost felt like this just plumped it up. Um, like I said, I, I felt like I could almost just use this and nothing else. Um, but it's also, despite it being hyaluronic acid, sits really well underneath everything else that I tried it with. Um, so I tried it underneath oils and, you know, different night creams and whatnot, different actives, and it's, it's absolutely fine. You know, it doesn't peel, it doesn't boil up. Um, there's no scent in it. There's no fragrance. There's nothing nasty in it. I really, really enjoyed this. That was a surprise. Okay, on to SPF. I have got three here. And I put a picture of this haul on Instagram and um, there was a lot of comments about the SPF, all good. Um, but I'm, I wasn't sure which one you guys were talking about because there was, you know, comments would say, that's a really good SPF. And I was thinking, but well, there's three here. Um, somebody else said, oh, those SPFs are really good. or well, those two SPFs. So I don't think people realised there was three and I'm not sure which ones you were talking about. But I didn't respond and ask because I wanted to experience them for myself and see, you know, what I thought. So let's first talk about this one. This is the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence Everyday Sun Protector. SPF 50 plus, PA plus plus, broad spectrum, um, vegan, etc. So this is, I think, probably one of the number one ones that people were saying was nice. It is a beautiful feeling product. Um, it, it's again a very light airy product. I have to say if I would if I would think of something about Korean skincare, my experience with it so far, it's been that nothing is greasy or thick. It's all very lightweight um, and gel and you know gel like refreshing that kind of thing. And this is is like it's not gel like but it is a light formula and, and refreshing feeling. This is a sunscreen that I had um, picked out because this, it's not uh, a mineral based one. It is a chemical one, but it's got Juvenal A in it. That's the main sunscreen in here. And then it also has something called Juvenal T. I don't know much about Juvenal T. Um, it's something I need to look into a little bit more, but it's one of the newer, um, more modern chemical sunscreens that doesn't currently have the, the same associated risks as some of the others. Um, it, this does have fragrance in it, but it's very, very low on this. It's the last on the list is orange oil and I can't smell anything in this. Well, not nothing at all, let me see. I can barely smell anything on it. It's one of those that I've used it a few times and the first time I was like, oh, that's good. I can't smell anything. So it is very, very low on the list. But then there was another time where I was like, hold on a second, I didn't think this had fragrance in it. You know, so I had to go and check my notes and it's ever so slight. So I don't think it's, I don't think there's a lot of it in there, but it, it, there is an orange oil in here. I can't smell it even as orange. It's just like I said, occasionally I'd put it on and think, is, is there a scent isn't there? You know, I was doubting myself that I had bought something fragrance free. Well, it's not fragrance free, but it is very low on the list. Um, this for me is really lovely and like I said I suspect this is one of the ones that you guys were saying was nice. Um, the only thing about it I would say is that it didn't moisturise my skin. Now I know a lot of you don't mind that, you're just looking for an SPF to use with your moisturiser but as you know I use, I like to use an SPF lotion that moisturises my skin so I don't have to use two separate products. I feel like um, that might dilute the SPF if you use um, a moisturiser then an SPF if you haven't waited for the moisturiser to sink in etc. Um, I mean that's not the biggest reason it's just convenience to just use one product. Um, so using this I do have to use something underneath it so I started using my um, ethyl vitamin C by 
Hylamide, the Hylamide C25, and it was absolutely fine. So I don't have any real issues with that because I have that problem with some SPFs. You know, I have to accept that not all SPFs will be moisturizing enough, or if they are, they're, they're too greasy. This one is not greasy, it's great under makeup, um, but if you've got dry skin, you might need to put, you know, a hyaluronic acid, an oil, or something underneath it to get the hydration you need. So overall, this is a winner. Um, I need to have a little bit more look into that Juvenal tea. Um, but this is another one that I, I could see me repurchasing and I really like how it feels. I think some brands are now realizing that we don't, most of us don't want fragrance in our skincare and they're removing it because I showed you a Purito um, SPF, which is a Korean brand and they apparently used to have fragrance in it because a couple of people said, oh, but that's got such and such a, an essential oil in it. And I said, no, mine absolutely doesn't. They've removed it. Um, so that was interesting to me. I, I had just checked the ingredients and could see it had none in it, but apparently it used to. Next is the Corsair X Shield Fit um, SPF 50. And this is a physical sunscreen. So it's zinc mostly, and it has some titanium dioxide in it as well. Um, you can see that it's a lot of a lot more of a thicker formulation, um, a lot more moisturizing than say the Claire's one, which is a, you know, a really light one. Um, and I like the ingredients and I don't, I didn't see anything obvious fragrance wise, but there's some things in there that I don't know. Like there is a, I think it's a clary oil. I don't know what that is. And then there's pine bark extract, but it does smell quite strong. And I have to say, I don't like the smell. It's a very herbal smell and I'm not keen on herbal smells. That aside though, it's a lovely feeling SPF sits well under makeup despite it being quite moisturizing i don't need anything else underneath it um, to moisturize this would be a great one for a dry skin perhaps not sensitive skin with that smell i don't know you know whether that is an irritating fragrance or not but personally i just just don't like the smell that's the only thing that would put me off this one um, but otherwise it's really nice and this one is currently showing as being on sale hopefully it still will be when i get this video up for you but it was 23.92 um, and it's currently nine pound 57 so um, a really good price for that the final one is by also by course rx so you've got this one the shield fit the physical sunscreen this is a chemical sunscreen this isn't one i chose and i would um generally avoid ones that were chemical based like this because this is octinoxate, whereas this one is a chemical, but it's the Juvenal A. Um, this is octinoxate, so it's one I would avoid. Um, <clears throat> it, it doesn't mean that you guys have to avoid it. It doesn't mean that it is dangerous per se. It's just that there are still question marks over whether or not it affects hormones. Um, and I have enough problems with my hormones as it is. I just want to avoid octinoxate if at all possible. And it's quite easy to do that nowadays. You know, there's quite a few products that are good physical sunscreens or using the, the more modern Juvenal A type products or Tinazorb. Um, but being as I got it, I did try it and it was very nice. It's a very nice, um, again, light formula. Um, it was still quite moisturizing though. It didn't make my skin feel tight. It sat well under makeup. Um, there's nothing else horrible in there. There's a slight scent to it, but nothing that I particularly noticed when I was putting it on my face. Um, yeah, if you're not bothered about which chemical sunscreen you use, then it would be a nice one to go for. So there's the two Corsair X SPFs there, and I suppose it depends on whether you're okay with octinoxate or if you're okay with fragrance, and then if not, um, the Claire's one would be perhaps for you. Um, I think this one is a bit more expensive, but there's this is a bigger bottle, this is 80 mil. This is, looks like it's something like 40, um, 50 maybe. Um, so, that's everything from the range. I think I will have put some video footage in of me applying some of these, um, maybe not all of them. <laughs> Standouts then are this toner by Claire's. Really like that. I am gonna continue to use this and it'll be interesting to see if I stay in love with this because it might just have been um, a bit of a novelty, you know, um, like sometimes I'll get an eye cream that I love and I'll use it for a few days and then just forget to use it. So now I've tested everything, I'm gonna put this back in my skincare bag and see how I get on. So if, if I get bored of it or I just think, you know what, it's not doing anything extra for me, I'll put it in my empties and fails. Or I might actually do a Korean skincare empties, that would probably be the best one, wouldn't it? Um, and my other standout was this low 
pH Overnight Mask by CourseRx, but I need to find out about the palm oil, but I did love how that felt and how my skin reacted to it. Um, and then these two Claire's items, this was the Midnight Blue Soothing Cream, really worked well for me. And then this is the SPF 50, that is the Juvenal A, so really like that as well. Um, that's everything, I hope that you enjoyed that. Some of you have mentioned to me on Instagram and, and where else, Facebook, maybe about some other brands that you really recommend so i did i do try to look them up when you recommend them but if you wouldn't mind if there are any brands or products that you particularly recommend leave them in the comments for me here and i will have a look and see what i think and maybe do another haul myself you know in the future um, because that was really interesting it's really sort of opened my eyes to different things like this toner is what i'm thinking of um and the the overnight mask there is a really interesting article about Korean skincare which basically says that it's just a marketing thing which you know I'm not I'm not yet of a convert I'm not yet a convert and saying that Korean skincare is amazing I think there is amazing skincare all over the world and it's more down to brand and even specific products you know um, but it's definitely very interesting to see which different ingredients they use and they seem to be ahead of us in terms of using the more modern chemicals in sunscreens so that's everything for today i will list all of my makeup in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you again